Here it is, believe it or not. I actually have it in my hands right here. This is it, the thing that you're here to see, the Osmo Action from DJI. I've actually had this camera for about a month now and I wanna share my experience using it, but first, subscribe. This channel is all about filmmaking, photography, and vlogs, all sorts of fun stuff about the tech space when it comes to camera stuff. If that interests you, if you like having fun, if you like being goofy and awesome, then hit that subscribe button and enable the bell notification so you know exactly when my next video is coming out. Now I've made two videos that are coming out today with the release of the Osmo Action. This one here that kind of explains what the camera is, what it can do, why I like it, some of the things that I found. And then another one reviewing it completely next to uh, this one here, the GoPro Hero 7 WAC, or black as some people call it. These two cameras are really kind of the best head-to-head -head right now. Sony makes an action camera, but GoPro is really what everybody talks about and everybody uses. So obviously we had to compare this camera with this camera. We made a whole video about it, so make sure to click the link below or the eye icon above to see that video. So without any further ado, let's get into the specs of the Osmo Action. First up, this camera has a 12 megapixel, one two third inch sensor inside of it, which is kind of the same as your iPhone. It's a small sensor chip. This is not anything that's gonna give you crazy depth of field. That's really what we're used to with action cameras. It's a small sensor, it's fine, but I wish it was a bigger sensor. The Osmo Action has a 1.4 inch massive touch screen on the back. I love the fact that this thing is so big. It actually just engulfs the entire body of the camera and I really love the screen on the back. It has a 140 degree field of view, f2.8 lens. f2.8 is great, that's reasonably fast, but again, with that smaller sensor size, it's not gonna be the best in low light, but hey, f2.8 better than f4. A 1300 milliamp hour battery, which is removable and it's got a nice kind of quick release system on it here. It's like a one-two punch kind of thing here. You click like this and then you click like that. Very Hasselblad kind of a thing. I know that Hasselblad and DJI work together a lot, so that's probably where that came from. This camera can take raw stills, which means you can take pictures using it and edit them in Lightroom with all that raw data. Great thing to have. But the big killer with this, of course, is the video features. And this camera is really no slouch when it comes to video performance. The maximum video resolution is 4K at 60 frames per second. And the maximum frame rate on this camera is 240 frames per second at 1080p. The maximum bit rate on this camera is 100 megabits per second in the 4K mode. And unfortunately, that's only an H.264. The H.265 or HEVC, which we've seen in the Mavic Pro series, is not included on the Osmo Action, which means that you're not gonna get the highest resolution possible. I hope maybe they can change that with the firmware update. You can do time-lapse, you can do hyperlapse with this camera. Again, really similar to other DJI products. One thing that isn't similar to other DJI products is the fact that this camera is completely waterproof, up to 11 meters. And with the diving housing accessory, you can go up to 60 meters, which means you can take this to the beach, you can take this to your swimming pool, and you can drop it in the toilet and be totally fine. I said that kind of like a country boy. Hold it. You can drop this here thing and toll it right there, and uh, it's gonna survive. No problem, right there in the little turd bucket right there in the toilet. There is voice control on this camera. I think that's a little bit of a gimmick, but hey, if uh, you wanna give it a shot, it can do it. You can say things like Osmo Action Record and Stop, and uh, that's about it. So it's cool that it does that. I'm never gonna use it. The button, it's right there. There's a button right there, it's fine. There's two microphones on the camera. DJI gave me this literally in a box wrapped in bubble wrap with no instruction manuals or no information. So I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say the microphones are right here in the front and then maybe one up here on the top. So microphone under the lens, which is perfect for vlogs. Which leads me to the last feature that I wanna talk about with the Osmo Action and that is the fact that it has a giant well, it's not that giant, but a big front-facing screen for those vloggers out there, or even people who are doing action sports and they have this mounted on somebody else and you wanna make sure that all your settings are correct. Maybe you're in a car and you're filming yourself 
Having this screen right here that is mirrored, by the way, is incredible. So now that I've got all the specs out of the way, I'm just gonna start talking about my experience using this and some of the things that I love about it. And I'm gonna talk about the Osmo Action as if you don't own one of these already, or if you do, you're considering selling it and buying this one here. First off, I don't have the price in front of me. I'm obviously making this video before actual release date. DJI did not give us an exact number. I was told that the price of this is going to be less than the GoPro, but GoPro has also been doing some sales recently, probably to anticipate the fact that this is coming out. So obviously you know the price of it, and if you're interested in buying this camera, then please consider using the link below in our description. That really helps this channel out if you buy it using that affiliate link down below. And if you click the link, you can obviously see the price of the Osmo Action. Right out of the gate, the stabilization and the color on this camera is really good. That's kind of the main point that I wanna make. The color on this is looking way better than what I'm used to with this. This camera is decent, the GoPro Hero 7. With what I'm seeing with the Osmo Action, it seems like they've really applied all the things they've learned with the cinematic drones that DJI's made over the years, with the DJI Mavic 2 and the Inspire, which is a very, very high production camera. And they're applying it to this small, tiny little pocket camera, which is just an amazing thing. Now the stabilization on this camera is using a similar system to the GoPro Hero 7. Instead of calling it hyper smooth, which is what GoPro calls it, they're calling it rock steady, which is kind of a goofy uh, term for sure. <laughs> but in my testing with this camera, I found the stabilization to be as good as the GoPro, which is surprising. I think that's kind of the main thing that everybody's been kind of twiddling their thumbs, like wondering what this camera is going to be with all the rumors, like, is the hyper smooth or as they call it rock steady going to perform as good as the GoPro? And obviously that was the very first test that I did. And to be completely honest, DJI nailed it. The stabilization on this camera is as good or at least good enough for most people. And I find that the stabilization really looks pretty solid, which is gonna be scary for GoPro because that's kind of the one thing that they have for them right now with the, uh, with the, uh, with the GoPro Hero 7. For vloggers or content creators, this front-facing screen is really the most amazing thing. I'm gonna show you how to do it here. I actually just turned it on. That's the sound that it makes when you turn it on. And right now, nothing's going on. I have the camera turned on. You can see the back of the screen here. And all I have to do is just push this little side button. You hear that little sound? And now the front facing screen is actually working here. I'm gonna pull out my phone so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So here's the back of the screen like this. I push this button here and it switches over to the front. Now what's really amazing is you can use it in this mode here, which is like a 16 by nine aspect ratio mode, which gives you the black bars on top and bottom, but it tells you exactly what the image is seeing. Or you can go into the settings here and change it to a full screen mode, like this. It crops the sides off. Now obviously it does crop the sides of the image off, but it's not that big of a deal because to be honest, when you're vlogging, you're usually in the middle of the frame. So I actually really like using this mode because I can just make sure that I'm looking correct, everything is kind of looking right. But if you wanna be a little bit more exact, you can use the other mode which shows you the full image, just gives you the black bars on the top and bottom. Now on the side here is a little flap that can be removed completely. And you've got micro SD card slot and a USB-C port, which I'm so thankful to see. I think everybody needs to put USB-C on everything and I'm glad that people are starting to do that. The USB-C port is used to charge the camera to plug it into a computer, or I think that the USB-C to mic input adapter that DJI makes will interface with this camera. I hope it does. I don't have confirmation on that. I need to buy one and see for myself uh, but if that's the case, that means you could use a Rode mic with this camera. I'm sure it'll work. If it doesn't, that would suck. By the way, comment below and let me know any questions you have about the Osmo Pocket. I've kind of talked a little bit about it. I'm gonna talk some more about it. I'm really curious what you guys want to see with this camera. And honestly, I'm just going in blind here. I know there's a bunch of other YouTubers that have posted today. I'm sure Peter McKinnon and all the fancy famous YouTubers have stuff out already. Uh, alongside this video. But the difference between them and me is I will actually make a follow-up video later this week talking about exactly what you guys want to see. So comment below and let me know what you exactly wanna see with this camera and I promise I will do my best to at least answer your questions or do that exact thing that you're asking me to do. So 
There's also, there's a filter thread on here, which is really cool. This little UV filter is, comes with it. And I'm sure other people are going to be making accessories for this. Uh, I can totally see Polar Pro making an indie filter, uh, DJI having a whole set of filters, Tiffin, all the kind of standard people making adapters and filters for this. The fact that it's a nice little screw on mount is really great. That was kind of the problem with the GoPro in the past is you have this kind of proprietary system where you have to literally like pop the thing off. You have to use like a tool to pop it off or have some sort of friction based filter system. Not as good, not as elegant. Having an actual filter thread here is great. And there's little rubber seals on here to make sure that you're not gonna get water inside of the lens. So that is a handy dandy feature. I'm glad they included that. So this thing is snappy, it's fast. I don't know what they're doing inside of this little box here, but the processing is good. I found that when I push record, when I pushed action, when I wanna switch settings, when I wanna to touch the screen, everything is really responsive. The touch screen is great and it just moves quickly. When I was using this alongside this, I found that the GoPro was just slow compared to this. I just found overall that the user interface on the GoPro was a little bit slower than the Osmo Action. Now, this camera is a little bit older, but DJI is just kicking butt when it comes to processing power and user interface with this camera. I find it to be really intuitive, really easy to use. Every time I hit record, it recorded quickly. When I hit stop, it wrote to the card very quickly. And the GoPro was just a little bit slower, making it a little bit more frustrating when in use. Now there's two color modes on the Osmo Action. You can't shoot log, unfortunately. There is a 4K HDR mode, but I haven't played with that yet. And if you guys wanna see me play with that, I'll, I'll try to figure out how to do that. I haven't seen it in the settings here. But there is a normal mode, which is kind of your standard baked in color profile and D-Cine like, which is DJI's kind of main kind of sort of flat image that you can get on all the drones and stuff. I shot the majority of my tests with the d -Cine like profile and it seems to grade fairly well. Again, this is H.264, it's only 100 megabits, 8-bit uh, 4.2.0, so it's not gonna hold up as well as the 10-bit in the Mavic 2 Pro, obviously. Um, but if you want something with a little bit more dynamic range, I would recommend shooting in the D-Cine like mode. Now, both of these cameras have kind of like a D-Warp mode. GoPro calls it the linear mode, and this camera calls it D-Warp, uh, just simply D-Warp. <laughs> and it's kind of fixing the problem that you have with both of these cameras because they're essentially like a fisheye kind of lens. And when you have a super wide angle lens with a field of view of, what is it, 145 degrees, everything just kind of looks bulbous and kind of goofy. So I would actually go and post in After Effects and de-fisheye everything whenever I would shoot on the GoPro. Now they've kind of included that with software. The linear mode on the GoPro is okay, it's not the best, but the de-warp on this looks pretty incredible. I'm not getting as much of that warping look, but it's still retaining the wide angle field of view. I don't see myself shooting in any other mode, to be completely frank. And on the GoPro, the only mode that you can shoot linear in is 2.7K at the maximum resolution. You can't shoot 4K linear. That was always a big downside for me because I hate the way that wide angle looks in 4K on the GoPro. But you want 4K for the resolution. So this camera actually can do a de-warp mode in 4K up to 60 frames per second. The camera has an accelerometer built into it, so no matter which way you hold it, it's always gonna auto-rotate. You can turn this feature off if you want, but it's just nice to know that you can do that, uh, especially because you're probably gonna be mounting it in weird ways, which leads me to talk about the little cage that it comes with, which is essentially a total GoPro knockoff uh, cage system. It gives you the two little prongs that you're used to seeing on all GoPros, which means you can use any GoPro mount that you already have, a car mount, a head mount, and if you don't have any already, there's tons and tons of these mounts available on Amazon or directly from GoPro, which I don't recommend buying because they're way overpriced and ridiculous. You can totally buy cheap knockoff little plastic mounts that are great off of Amazon. The GoPro ones are not even that high quality. They're super plasticky, so definitely check out all the accessories that you can get. Possibilities are totally endless. It's great that they include this little mount here and it reminds me a lot of, well, a GoPro. The Osmo Action interfaces with the DJI Mimo app, which you're used to using if you have a DJI Osmo Pocket. 
gosh, these words are terrible and I get confused all the time. The app is great, it does everything that you would expect it to do. You can push record, you can like change your settings and kind of do all the things that you would expect again uses a Wi-Fi connection here. But what's so great about this is I don't need the app. And honestly, I don't like using apps. I never like using apps. It's always just a means to an end. I can't stand using them, to be completely honest. I think that they're really annoying to use. I may get one here for my desk here, and that way I can interface my camera. That would be cool. Maybe I should start doing that with like my iPad. I don't know, but when I'm out and about, using an action camera especially, I think using an app is kind of tedious and GoPro really pushes you to use their apps. Uh, and because this has a screen on the front, I just don't really think I'm gonna even be using the app very much, which I really love. Plus, they're not selling me some sort of photo backup service that I don't want, which they do all the time. I think GoPro is really gonna have to come up with an amazing follow-up camera to this They've already started dropping the prices on this camera here. This camera's older already. It's you know over a year old now, so they really do need to update it. I think GoPro is gonna have to include a screen on the front. If they don't include a screen on the front like this on the next GoPro, then they're in serious trouble because just that one feature alone makes this kind of literally like the only option that I would recommend. In fact, I used to say that get an Insta360 ONE X. I know a lot of people have been recommending people to go from a GoPro to a 360 camera because of the versatility of it. But having this screen on the front here to me outweighs kind of the convenience of having 360 degrees, which by the way is kind of a waste of space anyways. And I never really liked using 360 cameras for action camera shots. You need to use an action camera if you want action camera shots. And right now, this is kind of the best one. Again, I want to remind you to check out the comparison I made with the GoPro and the Osmo action camera that will be linked in the icon in the description below. And if you're interested in picking up an Osmo action, then please consider using the affiliate links that we provided below. I'd like to thank you guys for watching to the end of this video here. Hope you're enjoying the new set. If you're a Kiantika fan, this is definitely different. This is my garage. I'm shooting this video late at night in the garage uh, all by myself. So very interesting uh, time right now experimenting with all this. So thanks for bearing with us. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and just join me on this journey that we're having on this channel. Once again, I'm Dave Mays. This is the Osmo Action Camera, which is giving GoPro a run for its money. See you next time. Oh yeah. I was wearing these pants the whole time, you didn't even know. Look at that glory right there. <laughs>